we will do the torsion experiment today right i will explain the procedure how to perform the experiment and how to record the data and then you will use the data uh, for your report right so first of all what we do we have the specimen the torsion specimen this is important for you you should understand the torsion specimen right and the dimension for this specimen i will share it with you it is in this manual and the photo was already shared i think in the whatsapp group but i will share it again with you you will have that photo so the dimensions are given the diameter of the specimen is given which is important and the effective length or the gauge length of the specimen was given and that is also important now for on every specimen there is a code right it is not written which specimen is it we don't know the specimen but every specimen has a unique code what we are doing in this experiment we have to find the shear modulus of the specimen we will find the shear modulus experimentally using the experimental apparatus this apparatus and then we compare the shear modulus with the value which is provided to us in the table that value also we will share uh, with you i think already you uh fix the specimen let's say i am taking this specimen right and i am putting it in the uh machine so i have to note down what is the code on it it is mt40n this mt40n i have to keep it in my mind now here in the apparatus this is the safety shield i have to remove the safety shield from the apparatus and we have jaws here in this specimen in these jaws i have to fix the specimen like this you see this jaw we can move from here to left and right right from here here we have a handle so now we have fixed the specimen in it you see if you fix the specimen there is a little bit play i will rotate this wheel a little bit to remove the play now it is fixed properly once it is fixed properly we close the safety shield on the apparatus right and then we have to start the software for the data recording so what data we need from this uh, specimen with this machine what data we are recording we need the uh, torque which we are applying to the specimen let's say this is the specimen it is fixed from one end from here it is fixed from this side we are rotating it so it is fixed like this and this side we are twisting it we are applying torque to it and we are twisting it so we need the torque which we are applying from this wheel to the specimen and we need the angle of twist how much we have twisted the, the the specimen so what we do with this data acquisition system i have to switch on uh, from here i have to open the, the uh, data acquisition software and i have to switch on the operator it is already on now i am just waiting for the uh, software when the software is open now this software first of all i have to connect with the hardware so there is initiate communication in this software so i have to click on the initiate communication so now it says that the software is connected with the hardware if you see here we already have some angle of twist value and we already have some torque value here we don't want this value we want to start from zero right so we have to make the value zero how to make it zero we have this button for the torque we have to press and hold this button it will make it zero and for the angle of twist also we have to press and hold this and it will make this one zero now you see here in the software both the values are zero what we have done we have chosen a specimen mt40n so i have to select mt40n in the software so mt40n is in the software now the dimensions are also given here in the software if i choose the specimen the dimension just comes here because already it is defined in this system right then i have to start recording the data recording the data is what when i start recording the data at the same time i have to start the experiment applying torque to the specimen right how i record the data here in the software we have an option start data acquisition so i click on the start data acquisition and there is time interval in second i have to choose as minimum as possible like we have 0.5 second so i will choose this 0.5 now here i can start the data i will start the data at the same time i start applying the torque to the system right so now i will just click on here to start recording the data and i have applied start applying the torque to the system now in this thing i have to make sure that in this start my torque or the wheel which i am rotating here is smooth and as slow as possible 
there is a reason for this i will explain it to you on the in the on the graph which i am explaining on the board and then once the torque value become somehow stable uh, like the, the 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 change is not too much if it is like slow now still it is increasing too much so we are rotating slow this is a, again is possible like this is manual so depends on your practice now you can see the torque here it is changing but very less it is changing so once the, the change in the torque is less then we can what we can do we can increase the uh, speed of the torque from here because now this the material is in the plastic region and we don't need the data in the plastic region for this experiment specifically we are more interested in the elastic region because we are finding the shear modulus in the elastic region only right so that data is more than enough for us to find the shear modulus so once the torque is uh, the change is become slow right then we can increase the experiment now you can see here the the the, the specimen is twisting right and we are applying the torque we will do the experiment until the the specimen fracture the specimen breaks right once it breaks at that time we have to stop recording the data right and then we will see whatever data we have we will just take it and we will start analyzing the data and find for finding further things like the shear modulus and all the the, the data which you will receive depends on in the start how much smooth and how slow are you are rotating because if we have more number of points there and the points are like accurate then the value which we will be finding from the graph the shear modulus will be accurate your report you are writing you have to follow the procedure the steps what i have done in this video right so in your own words you have to write you will not copy from the manual and just paste it there right you have to write all these steps what i we have done in the uh, today's video so this is the procedure you will write the procedure Okay, so the material breaks now you can see so at this time we have to stop the uh, experiment here once we stop the experiment what we have to do we have to take the data from the uh, software but before taking the data let's have a look of the specimen what happens actually here you see here this is the specimen we can just drag this back and we can see the specimen this is the specimen when it breaks right so you can see the, 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 the fracture in the specimen. Now how to save the data from the software? We have to close this window and we have to click here on this HTML where it says that export data to HTML file. Right? We can save here with some test, let's say test on Tuesday, right? Sure. So you will see the data here. What you will have in the data? Here, there are various data. First of all, you look here, you have the specimen MT40N. So this is important. So those who have done the data, please check for which, which specimen you have done, which already have the data, the students, some students have the data, right? So you can find the specimen also from here. We are interested here in few things. One is the angle of twist, right? In degree and radian also we have, we are interested in radian, right? We are interested in the torque values, which is also here in this column and we are interested in the shear stress value. So these three columns we will copy it into our excel sheet and then we will start pro uh, processing the data. How we process this I will explain on the board to you guys right. So this data you can save and once you save it then you will do these processes which I will do uh, explain to you on the board. So come here. So here now you what you have, you have the data, right? Which I already explained to you. Let's say you have this table. This data here is not the real data, just randomly I put the value. So you here, you can see we have the theta and degree, theta and radian, torque and stress, shear stress, right? With this data, what you have to do? We have the famous tor tor uh, torsion formula, which is torque divided by the polar moment of inertia, divided is this is equal to the shear stress, the tau, divided by the radius of the specimen, and this is equal to g theta divided by L. G is the shear modulus, theta is the angle of twist, and L is the length, the gauge length of the specimen. J is the polar moment of inertia, and the polar moment of inertia for the solid shock 
is pi d4 divided by 32. So diameter you have, you can find j, which is the polar moment of inertia. You have this data, right? You will plot the data. How you plot the data? Let's say you have this plot. You will plot the torque on the y-axis and theta here in radian, right? Make sure torque in Newton, meter. And you will just insert the graph in the Excel, you can do it, right? So once you see the graph, it will be like this. It will be like this, right? Now this graph, we can get a lot of information from this, but here in this course, we are only interested in the shear modulus, how to find shear modulus from this. Now shear modulus, we are finding from this linear region. You see from this region only. We are, this is the elastic limit, and after this we have the plastic region of the specimen, and th before this we have the elastic region. What we will do, we will plot this data only. We will delete this data, which is on the right side. If we plot this data, we will see a linear graph, not like this, then we will have a straight line. It might be straight like this, like this, like this, but it will be a straight line. That straight line means that the torque is linear to the angle of twist. If we are increasing the uh, torque, the angle of twist increases. Now in this graph, if we see, take one point here, we have torque value here, we have theta value here. If I take slope, it means it is torque over theta, right? So this torque over theta, I will get from this graph one value. Let's say the value of torque I divided over theta and I get 50. This 50 I can use in the above equation to find the, the shear modulus. If I take from this equation like torque over polar moment of inertia is equal to G theta over L and rearrange this equation in the form of like T over theta, right? T over theta, this will be equal to G, J over L, right? And if I want to find the G, so G will be equal to what? T over theta multiplied by L over J, right? Now, this G we want to find, this is the shear modulus. But this data, these two terms, is 50 for us for the experiment. So you will put 50 here, you will put length of the specimen, and you will put J, polar moment of inertia of the specimen, and you will get G, which is the shear modulus, right? And this shear modulus will be in Pascal. And you can convert it into megapascal, gigapascal, whatever you want. This is the shear modulus, how we find it. You will find this way, there is another way, to find, right? Then another way is what? Instead of torque, <coughs> we plot shear stress, Newton per meter square, shear stress. We have the shear stress also, right? So we plot the shear stress versus theta. We do the same process. And here, instead of torque versus theta, we get the, the shear stress, the tau. Tau divided by theta. And this term, if you look into this, uh, the above equation, we have a term, which is, this is also equal to tau divided by r. So now ignore this one and take these two terms. And same way, find g from this equation. And one term will be uh, tau over theta, shear stress over theta. And you put the value, the other value, which is the radius and the length, you put it in the equation and you will get g from that one also in Pascal. This g should be same like this g because both we are doing the same uh, for the same data. This is the g which is the shear modulus and we found it experimentally from the, from the second experiment if you do it you will get this type of equation. But you can arrange the equation to make g as a subject of the equation. You have studied it in math, right? So this g or this g, both are what experimental value for the shear modulus. And those experimental value, what we will do with this, we will compare it with the theoretical value for the specimen which we have done the experiment 
most of different students have done for different specimens. So let's suppose your experiment is T N N40 or T N40 40 N T 40 N like today we did for this one, right? So for in the table, it is provided for the, all the specimen, the shear modulus is provided. You have to compare this shear modulus with that one. Then in the lab manual, whatever you have, in the lab manual it says you have to plot this. In the report, you have to plot this one and the previous one, the torque versus theta. Do this whole calculation, find it and do uh, write the report as per the rubrics provided in the lab manual.